Hello, welcome to a new video. I am desperate to tidy up my desk. Well, my table art area. Um, a whole load of stuff fell over yesterday. Some paintings that were sort of propped up drying I think are now dry and I can put them away. But before I put away my oils, which are in this little box here, there's a couple of things I want to fix on some paintings that I've done recently. So this one, which I'm really quite proud of, there's just one thing and once you've seen it you can't stop staring at it. And that's that this uh, drip here in the background, let me bring it up closer maybe. I've started to think this looks like a cyclone coming towards the deer. Because <laughs> you've got this quite black, this dark area here and then it sort of comes down. And now I just keep seeing this cyclone in the distance. <laughs> I don't like that. So I'm going to get some purple paint or you know some of the greens that I used and just blend it out a bit so it doesn't look that this long sort of cone shape. And I think that's it. I just want to also add a little bit of paint on this edge. I haven't gone right up to the edge there. And then yeah, I think I'll leave it alone. <laughs> I'm currently using some packaging as my palette because just for a little bit of oil paint, I can't be bothered to wash up the trays that I, we, I was using. So this is what I'm working with at the moment. And then I can just throw it away when it's done. Okay, let's let's do this well there I think I'll leave it at that typically the colors I'm using are so transparent that drip will just keep showing through and I can't seem to do a lot about it unless I start mixing white if I start doing that, I'll have to rework the whole of the background. So I'm just going to leave the drip, but I've made it less look like a cyclone shape <laughs> by adding some more darks at the bottom there. So I think I think that solved the problem. I've just added a little bit of colour down there where it was needed. There we are. I feel very gothic wearing black today. I don't have to wear black anymore, but this was quite a nice comfy t-shirt and it's the weekend and sometimes you just want to be comfy. <laughs> so that was the last painting we did of the oil and drawing section of the art course I'm doing. I'm sorry if you're bored about hearing this, <laughs> about this. It's just my year. This It's a year long course and it's meant to be like four hours a day of work and so it is basically my life this year <laughs> and so that's basically what I've got to show you. I hope you don't mind and if you are at, at this channel for the sewing content please stick with me because I have got so many plans for some new outfits that I'm going to be making soon so please stay along for the ride if art isn't your thing. I will be back to the sewing as well. I'm really excited actually to get started on that, on those projects. Okay so the oil and drawing section is done and completed which is quite nice to be honest. I enjoyed particularly learning about the oil. I never would have chosen to have a try at oil painting if it wasn't for the course. It just wasn't something, I just thought it was too much of a hassle. Perhaps in another video I'll talk more about using water mixable oil paint because I know a lot of people might be interested in that rather than using your traditional oil paint with solvents. This is how far behind I am on the videos. I've almost finished the whole of the next section which is mixed media and voice. So let me take you through what we've been doing for that. Uh, so the first thing was acrylic with oil over the top. So again this is something new I'd never done before but I think a lot of artists do use that technique because the acrylic dries nice and quickly and you can just get on with your lower la layers and then just finish with oil. And I have to say I did not like using acrylics at all. I haven't painted, I've done one painting recently with acrylics and that was to test out <laughs> the, the bottles I have that I had for GCSE art. So that would have been 20 years ago. I still have those paints and I wanted to see what they were like. So I did one sort of quite abstracty sort of picture a little while ago but apart from that I haven't really painted with acrylics much at all and I was sort of reminded why they're not for me I don't think. I was not keen. I didn't get that nice intuitive feeling. I do I know it is art so you're allowed to sound a little bit arty farty I suppose but I didn't get that connection. <laughs> I didn't get that connection with the paint that I get when I'm using other other types of media. Media or mediums? Oh, I don't know. I don't oh, I don't know all the lingo properly. 
Anyway, the art tutors of this course I'm doing, they're always banging on about how juicy and rich oil paints are and how if you put a layer of oil over the top, it, your picture comes alive. And having done this one, I, I totally get it. I totally understand. Maybe in the clips you'll be able to tell or whether you need to see it in real life, I don't know. But oh my gosh, I would really encourage you, if you are an acrylic painter, have a try at layering a little bit of oil even if it's quite a washy layer over the top because the colours really did come alive there's no other way of sort of saying it really I was so amazed at the difference and I was thinking wow I'd, I'd more or less decided I wasn't going to use oil paint in my future process but I'm still on the fence about it now because yeah the colours come alive with a will I have to say Anyway, I'm not sure, I'm not holding up that picture right now because I want to make a little change, which I'll do in a minute. And the first one was about inks, with then acrylic over the top and then oil over the top of that. And I painted this magnolia branch. Now, I think now we're starting to do uh, like build up layers, some of which you can see through, some of which you can't. So there are like blobs and we were meant to try all different ways of laying down ink, you know, splatters and drips and all sorts. So some of that you can see through. A lot of it ended up opaque over the top so you can't see much of it left but still I did like that sort of almost oh it's quite Monet-ish actually the background reminds me of the of his lily ponds I like that. I like those colours. I think I'm going to be using those colours in the future. That was that one. The second one was a similar thing except I did my own sort of experiment and used gouache instead of acrylic for this one and then with oil over the top to see how that would work and it worked great. The rose was hard. <laughs> something else I might do with it while I've got my oils out extend the stem so it's not floating so that it could be a rose in a garden yeah, I liked that background as well. I do like sort of abstracty backgrounds. That's better. So the next section was about mark making. To create, again, it's sort of abstracted or abstract marks that aren't really there in real life but make your painting more interesting. Oh my gosh, I, I really struggled with this one. It doesn't come naturally to me. I can't, I'm really not very good at conjuring things out of my mind. I love the effect on other people's art. I don't think it's gonna be able to be something that I continue with. I just couldn't get it right. So my first attempt, oh yes, that's something. Also, that, sorry, I'm going on a bit of a tangent now. We were now allowed to use our own sources. So instead of choosing from their options, we could still do that. They had some options that we could if we wanted to, but I thought I'll start using my own photographs. So this one is of Hales Abbey. If you watched my Cotswolds videos, this is the second trip to the Cotswolds. And so again, I did this with gouache 
uh, water soluble crayons and then oil over the top but can you see the sort of mark making bit so I did some scribbles in the sky so there's some scribbles here some I did sort of like the sort of pattern along here and some cross stitch in the sky and then I thought oh that's not really enough it's too subtle and so I did this sort of weird pattern here in the shadow of this bit and then I just did some random like extra large grasses over here with some swirls <laughs> actually loved it she thought all those bits were great I'm still on the fence like I said I don't think mark making is gonna end up being my thing but the overall effect of the picture I really quite like and I really I enjoyed painting the ruins of the Abbey as well that was that was fun continuing with the mark making I had a roller that made marks on this one so this was a Stonehenge hopefully obviously <laughs> but I did a completely abstract background with the marks I did these this sort of printing in the background I used an ink stampy thing to do some dots over here then I used it was a marker pen to do a whole load of swirls and patterns see I quite like that it's quite subtle you have to look closely to see them and I do I do like that like you know you don't notice it at first and then when you look close up there's some more interesting bits and pieces to spot I do kind of like that so I maybe I'll maybe I'll work on it I don't know that one. I was quite pleased with the rocks. So the other thing we were doing at the same time as all this was um, really honing in on your personality and how that might affect the type of work you do as an artist and that's quite interesting. Lots of quizzes. Everyone likes a quiz to find out what they're like. <laughs> that was fun and then one of the things was spray paint now I, I didn't buy myself a whole load of new spray paint because I haven't got the room in here to risk spray paint so what I did is I used my spray ink which I thought was near enough I could more or less get all the same effects that they were doing I did some stenciling I did this woodland. That's definitely one of my favourite pieces I've done in this section. on another tangent because I'm getting so distracted by a house martin sitting on the scaffolding right outside my window and he oh there he goes there he goes <laughs> yeah we've actually had the house martin's second brood I think do you call it a brood I'm not sure but they recently left the nest we've got one lot in the garage and one lot in the shed and the ones in the shed came out a bit earlier but the ones in the garage came out this week honestly it's just a delight <laughs> they're so cute they all fly up and sit on the scaffolding just up here but it turns out they go back to the nest. I, I I sort of assumed sorry I'm really going on a tangent now I really assumed that once birds left the nest they didn't go back but I think this lot they do I think house martins do they seem to come out during the day and then go back to the nest I don't know but anyway so I've got some footage of these cute baby fluffy gorgeous little house martins and I thought you might like to see that Right.
Right, so the last section that I've done is abstracts. So the last piece I did, I took a bit too seriously and struggled with a bit. Um, so I'm really glad that the next lesson I'm doing is abstracts. So I'm going to go a bit mad with this. I've got an A2 sheet of paper, nice and big, to go wild with. And um, I'm going to just prepare it today, ready to start painting tomorrow. And I've got with me some crackle paste, some mini art stones. So I'll apply that with the Liquitex matte gel and lastly all these are all rolling away i've got some texture paste opaque matte so i'm gonna just have fun with this to prepare the paper this is acrylic paper and then i'll leave all that to dry overnight and tomorrow start the color like i said not great at coming up with things out of my mind so i went with quite a basic composition get the focal point on the rule of thirds and then sort of go from there and have fun with textures. I do enjoy playing with texture pastes and crackle pastes and all that sort of thing. I find that quite fun so I really went to town with this one. This is on a big, I thought I'd go big for this one. ended up looking a bit like a cityscape, a bit like New York with a river in front and buildings and a reflection. I mean that wasn't my intention but I think that might be what you read into it or you might read into it something else. It's entirely up to you. <laughs> um, anyway yeah so I used these little stones here too to create some texture. I did really like doing that and that was with acrylic. I did really enjoy the freedom of an abstract. No pressure to get the form right you could do what you like I mean there is still there's definitely more rules than I realized there's a lot more to learn about abstract than you might think I have to say so that was quite interesting yeah do you want to be in the video are you in the video a little bit yeah we're at the point in the course where we are starting to build towards our own style our own processes our own voice and all that sort of thing so for the second abstract I was trying to do an abstracted background of woodland because a lot of my reference photos are in woodland. <laughs> well you'll have to tell me whether you think this is abstract or not but uh, it didn't really quite go according to plan. Basically this is just a copy of another painting I did recently but with different type of paint and so I wanted to have another go with oil laying layering oil this time over watercolour not gouache and using a palette knife to get some thick textures to see how that would work so it was a bit of an experiment but didn't really turn out very abstract <laughs> I do like it though <laughs> so there we are that's that little update <laughs> of all the stuff that I've done recently there's three more techniques I haven't done I haven't used rollers I haven't used gold leaf and dry pigments so I'm not quite done yet and then it's the scary bit of getting ready to build our portfolio which is exciting and very very scary I still really don't know what I'm doing okay so this is the painting that was the oh it's got some the one that was talking about oil over acrylic so it's been sitting in the corner for a little while and I've decided to add a couple more crows so you probably can't see, you, d you won't be able to see them from here, from there. I'll, uh, I'll bring you close up in a sec. But I've got these faint crows, one here and one down here. And then there's this space here and I thought, do I just leave that as light or do I fill it? And I have decided to put a couple of flying crows in here. Uh, again, while I've got the oil paints out, so I'm going to do that. I thought adding them would add just a little more touch of fairy tale. I think I'm definitely going to go down that route with my art and uh, maybe creating sort of narratives, which is why I added. So in the picture, in the in the photograph, uh, Jude is only holding one of these flowers, and I thought, well, I'll add a couple more in 
so it looks like she's holding a big bunch of them and then I'll put one on the floor so it's a bit like is she picking them up is she dropping them like a trail along the path why is there one on the floor <laughs> you know I just like that sense of story in a, in a painting it's not much but it's something and I thought the crows add that little bit of I don't know a little bit of threat maybe a sense of danger I'm not sure but it's got quite a uh, Red Riding Hood feel about it I think this painting Oh, I'm a bit nervous to do this, I'll be honest. So there we are, there's my two new birds and uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm now going to have to change the painting name from two for joy to four for a boy. <laughs> The other two, they're a bit more discreet. There's a little one down there. And then we have another one in the tree up here. I quite like it being called Four for a Boy because there are also four flowers in the picture. So you kind of think, were they from a boy? Is she going to a boy? It sort of adds a little bit to the story. I have literally turned on the camera in excitement because the sun is shining. <laughs> This is such a rarity. This has been the worst July I can remember. It really is. It is completely the wrong summer to have your roof off. <laughs> I mentioned months ago that we were getting solar panels on the roof. They are finally up, which is quite exciting. We are actually using electricity. We are generating ourselves with solar panels on the roof. And that is really exciting. But the roof, the rain has been coming in. Another bit of ceiling fell down in the night. Oh dear. look how much water we collected yesterday. I must change that before the downpour that's expected at four. This is not meant to be raining yet. But oh my god it is just coming in through the roof and we've had rain dripping in in our bedroom. Well, basically all the, the rooms along the front side of the house. Yeah, we've got buckets and containers everywhere. It's really lucky. I only recently bought some of those, you know, plastic storage boxes. And so they've been everywhere co collecting water. And it smells bad. I don't know what I, what it's going through in our roof, but it, it does smell bad. So, yeah, it's been a bit stressful. Every time it pours with rain, which has been regularly, <laughs> out come all the all the buckets and things and uh, and then I'm running around taking out the light bulbs as well because the light bulb was the light bulbs were filling up with water and dripping out of the out of all the lights oh it's, it's been a disaster hopefully by the time this video goes out the roof is will have been and we can just chill out a bit I'm just so sick of it it's every you know the rain there's a downpour every day anyway <laughs> <laughs> tell me how your summer's been are you i mean i feel stupid moaning about the rain if you are in europe or but pretty much anywhere else in the world so unless you're in the southern hemisphere you are probably experiencing a heat wave still i mean everywhere else seems to be getting all the heat and we seem to be getting everyone else's rain so it's been a bit of a miserable summer since glastonbury festival in what in some ways i quite like the fact that i don't need to feel guilty for not being outside doing the garden and doing all the jobs that need doing outside because I'm trying to get all my art done inside of course and I and I hate doing art inside when it's a lovely day I think I should be outside I should be outside writing or something but I have to admit I'm ready to sit in the garden again it's been long enough I'm ready to sit in the garden again <laughs> well yeah let me know in the comments of what the weather has been like where you are in the world whether you mind a bit of summer rain or whether you embrace it and if you know someone who who you think would enjoy this video please share the link with them i would really appreciate it and i'll see you again soon take care bye